When Bill Mountjoy wants to step up to the mic, he doesn't have very far to walk. This former radio announcer has been collecting old microphones since the 60s. Microphones are, to me, sort of a gateway into radio. They, uh, they make a statement as far as this part of the country is concerned, at least within the five-state region I have about I was told I have a fairly large collection. In fact, he has over a hundred of them now. How many times have you seen an old uh, movie from the 30s and 40s where you saw an announcer in front of an old microphone with meters behind him? And it was, it was that kind of mystique that I liked about having a microphone. Now, as you might have guessed by now, Bill certainly isn't Mike shy. And one thing's for sure, he doesn't shy away from collecting the rarest of mics. A couple of the most unusual ones, uh, the rare ones, are the carbon button microphones, which are microphones that have like a little element with springs around it. And uh, they were used back in the early 20s. A pair of RCA PB31 models came straight from Radio City Music Hall in New York. This Jenkins Adair condenser box-shaped mic is extremely rare. But the microphone that talks the loudest in the collection might be the one he picked up years after the old pea picker got his start with it. One of the famous microphones I have came from WOPI Radio, uh, where Tennessee Ernie Ford, legendary actor and singer, country music singer, worked as an announcer back in the 1940s. And Tennessee Ernie's not the only country singer Bill's got a microphone cable connection to. In high school, he was in a radio club with a soon-to-be-famous student. A very young, very beautiful girl, very friendly girl, by the name of Amy Lou Harris. I helped her, you know, I showed her how to, uh, uh, to do minor things, how to operate a radio console, um, and, you know, how to use a microphone. Her autographed picture hangs near the collection that Bill calls a sort of museum dedicated to radio. I guess the old saying is we all long for the past and the way things were back in the early 50s and 60s, and I guess that includes radio. To me, owning a microphone, something like that, is to me is reaching through a time continuum. You're grabbing, you're, you hold something, you're holding something from the past. So now Bill may be holding on to the title of Mr. Microphone. I look at it this way, it's my hobby. If the shoe fits, I'll wear it. Now that was certainly spoken loud and clear. In Cable Country, Tim Cable, Eyewitness News 11, Elizabethton.